Coming up on Unpacked. Maybe in Chibata, baby, you know what I'm saying? Says Shia, Lizzie, which was in the Setswana for me is just a, a component of that Africanism that I think the world wants to see us express more. It's natural, man. Rastafari. I in it! Today is all about praise, not praise and worship, but praise singing and praise poetry. We have two guests joining us today, and I'm very excited for this one. Jessica Mbangeni is a former domestic worker who has found her rhythm as a popular Mbongi and praise poet, well known and booked countrywide for her craft. Stone Siate is the Afro Cafe presenter and rapper from legendary music group Bongo Muffin, who has captured audiences through Setswana expression and delivery. These two sought after voices, right here at home and abroad, join me to discuss their calling of praise and what it means to be African. These are their stories. Let's unpack. Joining us in studio today is Jessica. We all know Mum Jessica, one of the most famous praise poets in our country. Welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Rele uh, Bokhile, for having me. It's a great honor for me. And then uh, joining us on VideoCon, we have Stone, who is also more of your modern praise guy. Stone, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Rele Bokhile. It's wonderful to be here. All right, let's start with you, Jessica. How important is the attire in the work that you do? Um, uh, this attire has got uh, different expressions. When I was a little girl, there was the attire that my grandmother uh, attires that my grandmother made for me mm. and uh, at that particular time I didn't even know that I was a praise poet I thought I was a singer because the most famous were Brenda Farsis and them uh, but there was this uh, um, ancient of poetry the muse that would rock me down I would just cry or walk away and speak alone mm. so um, it, it would happen mostly when my grandmother has made me a beautiful outfit. So I thought uh, they would have been said to me at home, um, I was a vagabond. Each time I've got new clothes, I want to walk away. Mm. So now each time I have new regalia, um, the ancient of poetry uh, gets um, what you call inspired and a new poem comes out. Mm. Uh, I've got Inabeta, I've got Isiata, I've got, um, and also uh, right now, uh, because I've collaborated, uh, I've traveled all around, and I know uh, and value the um, the diversity of our country, I add up uh, is Holwan as a Mandebele. So I'm more of a Nguni poet like um, uh, more than a, a closer poet. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, as a result, I'm an African poet. Mm. Stone, from your side, I mean, the reason I said more of the modern is because you incorporate rhyme, obviously, uh, from your work that we've known famously with Bongo Muffin and also in your own personal capacity. How important is attire in, in your craft? I think it's very important. Um, with attire, you set the scene, you kind of, you know, get, uh, you infuse the spirits of uh, your expression into you, you know. Um, a lot of the time um, when I go on stage, um, I have these skins that make up um, Tsecha, you know, that Yabatswana um, made out of a springbok skin. And I got that from Kosima Mohali. So, you know, it's And, and um, Kalosa for Kimang Muto. Kalosa, the significance of Kimang Kosio. Kosima Mohale is actually, I mean, I have, a, my family has a long history with him. Uh, my grandfather was one of the people that got his grandfather to escape to Lesotho during the anglo Boer War. And um, he's a young king, a young uh, Kosi from um, the Bakwena side, Yabatoana, around the Brits area. So he's a friend of mine, him, uh, him and uh, Kosima Bala. These are young chiefs, you know, that um, have brought kind of the dynamism to the chieftain dome and stuff. You know, people like uh, that there's Zolanim Kiva, you know, people who are bringing the young energy. We've seen it with Ancestors Day, where I think now the young people are bringing in that energy to kind of change and bring a new pace mm. to the whole identity of tradition and uh, traditional expression. So how do you marry... Um you know, the more modern side of you, which is almost like an infusion of kwaito, a bit of rap, a bit of hip hop, into the attire and the praise work that you do on stage using poetry as a form of expression. 
Um, you know, like for um, a, a lot of the, the, the rap, you know, and uh, the rhythmic rhyming that we know around the world originates from African poetry. Um, you know, people like Muhammad Ali were rhyming back in the day, you know, when he's talking about sting like a butterfly, it felt like a butterfly, sting like a bee. So um, it, it, I think when you have the, 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 the everything, like uh, the, the, the stage uh, attire, your, your beads, your, your, your skins, your traditional prints, even now, you know, with um, the even uh, modern clothing that I wear, I wear sports clothing from Magents, you know, but Magents has a sense and a sensibility that is very Afrocentric, very African, and expresses the clothes have prints on them, uh, verses and stuff that were, you know, quotes from African leaders. So um, with all of that, you set the stage, because I think if you were just to go onto stage with a white T-shirt and a pair of uh, modern blue jeans, you, you, would, you wouldn't feel, and even the people, I think, wouldn't believe you. You know, mm. there's a part where I think you need to invoke the spirit of the ancients in order for you to feel authentic and for them to be felt as authentic. Mm -hmm. So, Jessica, I mean, we've touched on attire and the fact that you say you're more of, a, of an Unguni praise poet. Yes. How did you make then that transition to say, I'm no longer just representing Kosa? Because um, uh, we are made of uh, um, uh, 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 totems. Mm. We connect to our uh, the, the animals that are, that belong to our clans. Mm. So it, 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 you 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 discover yourself uh, because it's a, this is a journey. You connect you you, you connect deeper and deeper uh, as you are holding the ancient of poetry. The ancient of poetry connects you to the ancestors. Uh, ancestry, the orchestra of your ancestry. Mm, mm. And you find, mm -hmm. Guti, you reach into the space of royalty. Mm. You know, I've got my lion skin that has got a, a head that made the whole world to, to, to roar and like, like just like it. Because it, it has shaken a, a space in their conscious that as much as the colonial system has decided to be patriarchal towards women mm. wearing uh, uh, skins of the lion of of of, of, uh, of the animals but our ancestors are directing us um, uh, uh, clearly and truthfully to who we are Mm. So hence, I've got my leopard skins, I've got my lion skins, um, I've brought my, my leopard skin here, but they, they tell me, oh, oh, no, don't put it today, uh, 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 use it now. I ask for permission mm. because it is the voice of my ancestors that I am conveying messages today. Mm. It's not the messages of of the opportunity, but is the messages that are driven, that I'm called for. Mm. And if I would be uh, 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 myself uh, with the world like this, I would be uh, with my friends, maybe in mm. Chibata, babe, you know what I'm saying? Sishaya, Lizzie, you know, but now I have... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, 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 but I am content and I feel complete with the purpose of God that is given to me. And hence, I travel the world on seven seas, preaching um, and talking and opening up conversations mm. about the importance of being true in ourselves as the Africans, because the whole world comes from Africa. Mm. The whole world is Africa. Utu Pixlika Semi, we are the ones who have made it possible for the world markets to trade in gold, in diamonds, and the food our stomachs still in. The human capital, artisans, everything that is Europe. Europe is African. Mm -hmm. it's, it's named after Queen Europa. And uh, we are the leaders of the world. So um, uh, 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 being Nguni, it's not even Nguni, Ngoni, because Kutwa Singabantu, Abangoni. Mm. We have no sin. We are united in the spirit of Ubuntu mm. and in the spirit of one love, one God, one purpose, and one destiny, as Marcus Musayak have said. Mm. Yo, yeah, ne, no, I'm, I'm just so enthralled with your knowledge, <laughs> but how you also connected. Stone, from your side, I mean, those looking from the outside might say, okay, Jessica is is more rooted in Nguni. Do you see yourself 
as a representative of the, mm. the Sotho language group or, or Sotho tribal groups? Or do you see yourself being a purist? Um, just, I think, um, you know, there's this tears and there are different positions and different um, By tears, you don't mean decade. You, know, uh, you mean you mean tears as in hierarchies, ne? No, 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 no. Levels, 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 levels. Yes. Okay. Um. So, yes, levels. And 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 you know, she mentioned the fact that uh, the people of the world come from Africans. I think more specifically, the people of the world come from the African woman. And um, how they proved that was that they found that they tested the genes of every pe person on earth. Every ethnic group, and they found that the only people that didn't have everybody else's gene were black African women, but everybody else has everybody has the African woman's gene, including the African man. So um, in terms of that root of us suckling, suckling culture from the breast of an African woman, it is exactly where I come from in terms of my Setswana, where my grandmother put me into it. But I would say that now, as we go out to the world, as the world becomes less homogenous and or more homogenous rather, and people are looking now with, with the internet, are looking for that new expression, mm. which of course is not so new with us, but to them it's new. They find that the authenticity comes back to us. And mm. Setswana for me is just a, a component of that Africanism that I think the world wants to see us express more. The world wants to see us being ourselves more with. So I would say, I would add Basoto, Batswana, Bapedi, because Ban Kaloka and they failed me. But I'm an African poet, more, uh, uh, you know, in the the the, 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 the the purest sense of it, because Setswana itself has the components of those languages, has influences of Swahili, Kiswahili, has influences of Shona, has influences of Arabic even in it, because we did experience the Arab traders that came down with the iron melting and all of that. You know, when you hear our phonetics in Setswana are very different to everybody else with the and the and the you know. So, um, yeah, I think uh, I'm a Montana, but at the same time, um, the African within me has an equal kind of proportion that is balanced. And um, for me, my culture is all combined because my children are partly uh, Tosa, you know, and so the culture really resonates with me. But at the same time, we've got such a history that everybody influences it. And I wouldn't, I would be amiss if I thought that only Setswana is what defines me. Would you consider yourself, Jessica, as a purist? I mean, we've heard you in your modern uh, uh, Afro pop songs. Would you say you're a purist, and what would you say makes a person a purist? Um, I am the purist because I draw the inspiration from um, our beginning mm. uh, as as Egyptians, as Stone has said. Um, remember Queen Cleopatra, um, the symbol of cultural revolution. Queen Nefertiti, the symbol of religious revolution. Um, uh, remember Queen. Um, uh, uh, Nani of the Maroons who fought the battles against the British, um, uh, the, the daughter of the uh, Asante Kingdom. Um, Uti Pixliga Seme, my mind and my knowledge of myself is formed by the victories that are the jewels around our African crown. The victories that we, uh, that we earned from Isandwana to Khartoum as Ethiopians, as Ashanti of Ghana, and as the Bebas of the desert. I draw my inspiration from the great Queen Menon of uh, Ethiopia, who, 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 who was the queen uh, from the, uh, his imperial majesty, Hail Selassie I. Mm. So I am the collective of the great queens and queens. I am uh, uh, the one of today, the sons and daughters of the soil, those who are coming up with innovative ways of doing things, I'm a piano, your hip hop, those who are, who are, who are drawing the world. Mm, mm, mm. Because we are the innovators. We, and we are, I don't think this is our end in the south of Africa. We are still traveling all around the world because we are the movers and shakers of the world. We are the mighty Gondwana. And I feel that I am the core of the world because I am the, the world depends upon me for its mindset of unity and peace so that we could have the beautiful world with no more wars. Mm, mm. 
You, Stone, the pressure is up. Are you a purist? <laughs> <laughs> no, because it's like you can't I listen know. to Jessica without feeling like you are listening to the recital of poetry, even though we're <laughs> having a conversation. <laughs> so, Stone, for you, are you a purist? I'm one of a kind at the same time, a product of the bloodlines, the lines that combine so I can carry on mine. Mm. Hi, man, guys. <laughs> and it's natural. You come to my place, I'm like this. <laughs> it's natural, man. Rastafari. I mean, for, for me, Stone, for, for me, Stone, obviously, the thing that has always had me just absolutely in love with your craft is how you have grasped the language so purely and so beautiful, so beautifully. Stone, I'd like to find out from you what for you is the relationship between the work that you do and ancestry and the work that you do and God? You know, for me, um, I, I come from a very Christian family, but it was almost like a paradox because my grandmother was both very Christian, but also very traditional. Um, I think Christianity was edging out the tradition a little bit. Um, but when I, as I grew up, it, there's just too many uh, contradictions for me, um, for me to you know, choose the, the, the Christian side of things. Um, for me, um, God, uh, my, my tradition, being a Motswana, is actually part of my religion. Mm. Um, being a Motswana connects me to God, and Badimo are my conduit to God. Basically, the people from the beginning of time, you know, from the first man, Kohalowe, who and breathed life into him. Um, I think some of those stories of how the universe was formed, you know, are all, the only the stories that we know. But um, you know, we we have folk tales about the polo holodibu, you know, and and all those folk tales that speak about the beginning of time. And um, for me, um, it, it's more of um, I'm a modernist. But at the same time, I believe that my tradition and my identity as an African, as a Montuana, has a very comfortable place in a modern world and in modern sensibilities and in a future direction for my people, for my children, for myself as well. Mm. For, for you, Jessica, I mean, the relationship between God, and I, I know in, in, in the context, Stone brought up Christianity, mm -hmm. the work that you do, God, the work that you do, and your ancestors. God as the creator of, of mankind. And my ancestors are the gift of life, the treasures that God has created for me to be able to hold the world as the oyster in the palm of my hands. Because all the talents that are, give, are given to my great-grandmothers, my great-grandfathers. My great-grandfather was a farmer. He was the wealthiest man. And he loved people. He, he trusted people. So that says to me, you, you, that is a space of law of attraction. Mm -hmm. Because I, I, what I want wants me, as Napo Mashiana once said. Um, my, one of my grandmothers is, was a praise poet. She passed away two uh, years ago. And she came from the family of uh, the, the polygamy. And um, th these are the intertwined, integrated models that God has given me when we are talking about the land that my grandfather, Untenteni, was plowing, the wealthiest man who had a lot of cows. When we are talking about beauty, dressing and adornment, my grandmother used to make traditional outfits and run a general dealer. We are talking about So that is, a, that is my, where my vocabulary comes from the knowledge it's authentic just by going home in the eastern cape i sit with my grandmothers my relatives the aunts of the aunts this thing of polygamy absolutely it has never been because to us it was a wealth creation measure and right now i am that wealth that is treasured by the whole world today the president of south africa is speaking on the africa day with jamaica which i have opened up those gates, traveled to Jamaica without any diplomatic call, but a spiritual call that God said, you are serving the purpose of bringing people together and what is happening in the Caribbean islands and that history of my people who have traveled
forward from Africa to build Europe and America are stuck there without the knowledge of who they are. And then I had to go and release them. And these narratives is the wealthiest narrative that I am mm. delivering to my people so that they could be proud to affirm and say, I am an African. Mm. I owe my being to the hills and the valleys, the mountains and the glades, the rivers, the seas, the trees, the deserts, the flowers, and the ever-changing seasons that define the face of our native land. Mm. Stone, would you say the work that you do is a calling or somebody can wake up one day and say, I want to learn more about myself. I want to praise. I want to give gratitude. I want to show that appreciation for those that walked before me for who I am. I think it definitely is a calling. Um, I just like uh, Sisu, I'm from, I'm from a poetic family and my grandmother actually is the, was the linchpin of that uh, part of the family, you know, during uh, uh, Manyalo, during the Pito, uh, Coco would just break out, you know, um, when people would be at the back, so you know, it, it, it's, I think it's yes, someone can choose it. I've seen kids um, from the Northwest, you know, who have, you know, tried their hand at it. Some have done better than others, but you can see that, you know, um, if a person doesn't have it in them, it doesn't really kind of translate into that spirit that you need in order to capture the feeling because. A lot of the time, even for Botswana, and um, a lot of the time you have to depend on people feeling what you're delivering rather than hearing and understanding word for word. Um, and so uh, for now, yes, you, you, you can, I think, if you're interested in it, kind of, you know, touch in it. And you'll never know if actually there is a, a giant sleeping inside you that wants you to open this thing. Like for now, for example, I wanted to be an English rapper when I arrived in the music industry 26 years ago. And someone said to me, hey, Mona, why don't you try it like this? And I sat under a tree. In fact, the first time I discovered it was when um, we were doing recording Tati's Gobu. And Jasid and Tani so were in the studio recording these lyrics that you know on the song. And I did a little prayer. I said a little prayer, Garmudimo, what am I going to do? You know, sometimes you can do it as a little bit of blasphemy where you're like Mudimu, but you don't mean Mudimu. There I was talking to Mudimu and say, Mudimu, what am I going to do when these colleagues of mine are showing me out? You know, like literally, I had never done anything that would have been close to, to match what they had just put onto that record. I wrote only that first line that says, Bumenuma soke bosi la kaka senuamoro. After I wrote that, the whole verse wrote itself. And I believe there was divine intervention because up till today, really, really what our music industry and the world value, values me for is this Setswana thing. I've had uh, almost two decades of Africa Fair as a show simply because of my Setswana. I've traveled the world, just like Usisi is saying, you know, where we were trying to tailor make an English uh, part or more palatable, digestible set for the Americans and the Europeans. And they would kind of appreciate it until we would get into this thing. Once we got into this thing on the second set, they would just go crazy. And I started realizing that's what the world wants to see from us. They want to see from me, that they want to see from me, me being myself and invoking and bringing out this gift that I've been given. Mm. Jessica, let's start with you on this one. And, and it can be quite a deep question for many, but what, what makes you, and I don't mean you, Jessica, an individual, African? Because we've already said everybody's born from the soil. Mm -hmm. Does it mean everybody in the world is African? Mm -hmm. Um, at this particular time in my life, being African is a journey because actually f uh, from origins, we are Alkebulan. We have begun to be Africans when we traded down um, uh, to the African continent, down south, um, trading with Mozambique and them. So um, for me, being African at this day, is being assertive of my art, using it as the commodity, a vehicle to convey or to, to convey messages and also to preserve our heritage intelligence, to liquidize it 
integrated amongst the, uh, the commodities that we have in our country, performing artists, visual arts, um, because that space is the space where I'm able to, to, to be in charge of my intellectual property. Intellectual property is my heritage because the soul, the soil is eroding, the soil, uh, the, the mines are getting exhausted, but the memory of my people and where we come from, the memories of the stories, beautiful stories, the heritage, the indigenous knowledge systems is within me because I am the museum of my people as an African. Mm. Stone, the same question to you as in from the perspective of uh, everybody else as individuals. Yeah, I, I think... Ooh, and umpleleka swana, umpleleka swana, ke khalitze mantua hao. Tatamulla nda. Konamu, tatamulla ke itzere ake. I think, wetu ho, 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 really. I think, ke moto onan le, onan le an allegiance and uh, a loyalty to 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 the soil um a person who well um sees the world from an african perspective um o o o o o motivate wa ke go direla africa o o o we bona jaka ngwana mmala sibilo you know um so for uh, the, i think khona le batho ba bantsho you know, Coco America by Longore, Haba Hasema Africa, Haba Habana Lerato for Africa, Habana Kele to Yahoo, Yahoo Totumata Africa. And so uh, for now, uh, I think more Africa came, Motoe Longore, Piluaha, my Kuto Kalohano, the Jo Puo, Limili, Waha, o o o o on the stage and then ababua the next day reja brai are bongo mafini la peria para to africa mabani bokae bo africa ba lona go mpeni meke morakere ke hema yana meke morakere wa bona ke hema ke hema africa I walk on the soil every day. I eat the food. I Africa is me. It is within me. So I think it's anyone who has a loyalty and an allegiance to the soil, to Africa, and the essence of what um, defines us. And how the essence Kibuaka something that is limitless because the essence of Africa is really the essence of this world. Uh, previous, previously on the show, uh, we spoke to Malusi Gwangwa, who shared with us his story about being raised in exile. And one of the things he shared was that he noted, because mm. he noted that when he was in the UK, there was no soil. And I thought to myself, mm. wow, no one ever thinks about that. But he noted how that affected him and the fact that there was no heat. What do soil and heat represent to you, Jessica? Um, soil and heat is um, is healing to us because uh, it's those the weather we are influenced by the weather by the oxygen the evaporation what happens to the soil happens to us so we are the we, we are connected to the soil as the people we because we are not GMO dependent we are uh, authentically dependent onto the soil and the sun. So therefore, when you are in other spaces, it tells you that you are not in your space of environment that has given birth to you. Ngoba la mame be kutwele, ebepi, klaibe se Afrika, esa sibeleko, sa kelwe apa, sa influenza apa, by all those um, energies. Uti upiks lika seme, genyimini, the fragrances of nature, have been as pleasant to us as the sight of the wild blooms of the citizens of the felt. So that affirms that being an African is being rooted, owing our being, uh, uh, I owe my being to the hills and the valleys, 
the mountains and the glades, the rivers, the seas, the trees, the deserts, the flowers, and the ever-changing seasons that define the face of our native land. Mm. Stone, from your side, do you have uh, anything you would like to share about your connection with soil and heat? I think about the fact that obviously with Bongo Muffin, you've traveled the world. Did you feel a disconnect to being African because you were you know, traveling to concrete jungles? Definitely. I think when you go um, to foreign lands, for me anyway, um, I can only last a week really. Um, and then after that, I feel extremely um, inexplicably homesick. You, you're visiting beautiful places, you're staying in beautiful hotels, you know, performing for all types of people of the world, but you're missing home. And I think it is that. Uh, you know, I, I call myself Linzwe TP, TP North. And Linzwe, TP Linzwe is a voice, TP, the voice of steel, but Linzwe TP is iron ore. And with the heat and the, 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 the iron ore that comes from the ground, you know, the ore is the medium, uh, the, the, the soil is the medium, and the heat is uh, the catalyst. And with that, you can, you can heat up rocks and extract iron from it and make arrows and, you know, make other instruments. Um, with, 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 with clay, you can fire it in a kiln, in an oven, and start making uh, implements like the to, to, to sustain you and feed you. So for now, I think uh, how it's just, uh, it's, it's a magic, it's an electricity. You can feel the difference, definitely. It's inexplicable. I cannot scientifically put it into a document and say, this is what it is. But definitely, it's vibrations, man. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is. It is. Powerful it vibrations is the in the Africa. <laughs> in closing, Jessica, what would you want to say to the young person who's watching, who's thinking, yo, I'm in awe. I'm, I'm worried that uh, my language is diluted. I don't speak anything pure, but you inspire me. You move me. I, I want to be more connected. As you associate yourself with spaces, that are speaking your language. Internet is all over the place. Research, mm -hmm. listen to um, stations, channels that are speaking languages. I learn languages, uh, diverse languages, Alapia, South Africa. Um, language influences the authenticity in you so that you can be able to project something that is of value even in the corporate space, wherever you are, you become yourself and you add value. So be in the space in the world. The world has created the virtual spaces. Be curious, research. English was, uh, I was taught English in Kosa. And this is so together, I was Africans to me. But today, I saw the Lalending at Yanga, Elisu to Nasebutsan, saw the Lalending at Yanga, Emma Pedini, Ria Lotchari at Tamisha, the Hoshili, the Hahabi, the Kulumia Sizulu. When you're in the Eastern Cape growing up there, it's even uh, like it's, 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 it's inspiring. Mdom Kulumi Sizulu, go with Sendia, Tetakan, Figilipandia, Kuluma Gazulu, Gita Zulomia Mandela Zimshope, Uzulu Gamaland, Lislo Samabanda, Utung, Wenaganda, Bortung, Mangulubin, Ushaga. Sabutu Shagan, go by and Cosia Samashobeni, who take Ulaba Fas, Baganum, Cabibet, Glabesem, Lofini, Betu Shagasai, Busagasai, Bangosi, Candigla Pesazag Netezeka, Hint of Yatsa Jesinia, Yatazin, Yatsa Jesinia, Yatazin, Yatsa Jesinia, Yatazin, we've been to Wenagandaba. Stone, why not represent, represent, our Qualemo, Bueliba to a youth, our two and just to my desk. Um, I've got a few of these, you know, I've got a few of these. I'm still learning. I'm, I still learn. I read. I read a lot. These are set works for uh, in the schools, you know. And um, so I would say that absorb, be a sponge for knowledge, be a sponge for new experiences.
so mongwara ke a khopola ke a khopola e looked and felt like le tabula the sun so hot khorota even le dipula re tswa le dipala that was the winter time 27 years down the line the real sunshine freedom and happiness today sponsored by di khatlamela masisi batlabani batlabani marumo fa si a ne mo di ga di tsalanya le ska ja go di re magapu a tlile meno a fedile pula aene ooh ooh i am so grateful this was such a beautiful episode you guys being african is so beautiful and i think the two of you represented so beautifully those of you watching at home hashtag unpacked with rele bogile thank you so much to our guest stone and jessica Join in on the conversations. Details are on your screens. And yeah, let's find more ways to absorb, get the knowledge. Let's be sponges. Let's learn each other's mm. languages. We are more alike than we believe. We are all children of the soil. Have a good night. Thank you for joining us. Next time on Unpacked. Apart from the world telling me I was different. Mm. So when did you reach the point where you're like, yeah, but I'm not just short? I don't think it was a lack of specialists. It was a lack of knowledge. Unpacked with Rile Bukhile Maboja. New episodes weekdays at 5.30 p.m. on my YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe. Television edited broadcasts weekdays at 5 p.m. Open up to S3.